And I, I'm curious as to what you, you talked about thinking we can live in a better country. What do you see and what do you imagine we can be? Um, in the words of Jesus, I didn't come to be served, but I came to serve and give my life. Um, I imagine life like that. I imagine myself being more that man with my wife, with my children, with my friends in the community that I live in. What if we woke up with an intention to live beyond ourselves and serve one another? I mean, you can just, you can stop right there and just fantasize and dream and go, I mean, so much would change. So much of the systemic pain and problem and issues that we're facing and doing our best to counter, I think, gets back to the willingness to say, look, I, I want to serve. And of course, for me and my faith, what compels me to serve is not just nobility or discipline or because I think it's a great idea. It's because I believe that Jesus has served me and given his life for me. And so it is my highest privilege and honor. Uh, Paul, one of the great writers of the New Testament, said, it's my reasonable service to offer my life daily as service to you, Jesus, and to humanity. And I dream of people who really internalize that, believe that, and start living their life um, in all fields of life, doing acts of service. Um, is, uh, is an awesome thing to think about and, and, and dream about. Now, do you think that that really is uh, possible? We're, we're inundated with, you know, especially in this town, you gotta make more money, you gotta be more successful, you gotta be showy, you gotta be materialistic, and you're saying, serve, serve. And a lot of young people are like, yeah, that's good, okay, cool, you're a pastor, I'm gonna go <laughs> and I'm gonna be the next Mark Zuckerberg and I got this app and I gotta get that suit and I gotta go to that fashion show and I gotta be seen, I gotta be out there, I gotta be moving it, and you're saying, serve. Do you think people will listen? I, I think one of the greatest audiences to listen are people who have tasted a teeny bit of that, of that life and that success and people who have, I, I've, I've done it all, I've got it all, I've arrived. And there's still an, an emptiness in serving yourself that Jesus talks about. And I think those are some of the greatest people who can say, I think there's more and I think it's, it is serving. Yeah, I, I, think the, I think the paradoxical teachings of Jesus are resonating with a new group of people because of the disenfranchisement of, of, of the American dream. Frankly, I think the American dream is falling flat. I think people are realizing it and they're going, what's next? And then here comes along the ancient teachings of Jesus that says if you lose your life, you'll find it. Jesus says, what does it profit a man to gain the whole world and lose his soul in the process? I mean, that's compelling material in the, in the epicenter of culture, creation, materialism here in Hollywood. And so I think the, the words of Jesus are so powerful in themselves. I think they captivate a wandering heart, a searching heart. And I truly believe I wake up every day compelled believing that people are searching and they're desperate and they want absolutes. I believe that the, the human makeup was designed for faith, hope, and love. And I believe the human experience falls completely flat and empty without faith, hope, and love. I believe people are desperate and searching. So, and I guess maybe that's how my parents taught me, taught me to believe <laughs> that people want to hear what I have to say. And, uh,